Hey guys, today we are going to look at the prices of most of the cards from Dominaria, the rares and mythics. It's always interesting to have this type of video because these prices will change. 90 to 95% of these prices are too high. Pre-order prices are likely to decline. Yes, there may be one or two cards that are undervalued but the large majority of them are overvalued at this time. Now, I believe the reason this is the case is when stores first JST Mind Sculptor first came out, he was very he was undervalued. The Lorwyn Planeswalkers were not that great. The Zendikar ones were not that great. Jace came out. Planeswalkers in general were not considered very strong or standard playable at the time. So he came out and he changed how people do pre-orders. Since that time, people have largely overpriced and very few times where you see an underpriced card. So I thought it would be interesting to take a snapshot of what the current prices are before release and then to review them at a later date. I do like the set. I do think there are cards in the set that are going to be very good for EDHs. Um, one of my biggest criticisms is the land. The land are not a uh, very, it's not that they're bad, but the Innistrad enemy check lands are just that. They're check lands that have been reprinted before. Therefore, when you talk about value in the five lands, uh, lands hold long-term value much better than other cards. I think it's kind of a wasted opportunity almost. So we do, do have a reprint. We have the Glide Gilded Lotus. Uh, the Gilded Lotus is very good. Uh, that should see a the steep decline in price. Uh, other interesting thing to note is goblins are back. And some of the goblins that were not in standard, that were very good in onslaught, are now, sorry, not in modern, are now in modern. So keep that in mind when you speculate on goblins. Uh, goblin pile driver looks pretty good. I'm not saying their goblins are strong enough for a modern deck yet, but it might get there because we definitely added some really iconic and very good goblins. The kicker mechanic is kind of interesting. The legendaries are interesting. Um, there's nothing that really jumps out as underpriced outside of Cabal. Yes, Cabal. Um, that land, I still like it a lot because it doesn't come in play tapped. And Ca Cabal coffers, the one problem is it doesn't produce mana on its own. So it's kind of a dead card sometimes. That card is never really dead, and it doesn't come in play. Like, it's a big deal when the land does not come in play untapped. Or tapped. Other cards to note, the Oath is very expensive, but should be ADH playable. I think that there might be, in the future, the Saga cards are very interesting mechanically. In the future, there might be some manipulation of them that I'm not aware of, which would break them, but then they would just ban them, just like the Fuse mechanic. The Fuse mechanic was not that great to begin with, but it wasn't like a modern, it wasn't a modern dominating deck, it was a okay deck. So the Fuse mechanic, I'm talking about Dragon Maze, where you can, when you, if you cast the card, you can actually cast both sides of the card, kind of a weird mechanical thing going on, uh, which they removed. So I definitely like um, some, the power level. Uh, the power level is most easily summarized by Steel Leaf Champion. When I was playing, you would pay five for something called Elven Riders, and it would be a free free, and then creatures without flying cannot block it. And that was considered like very good, because you would giant growth it and do massive damage. But now we have you know champions and. I think the Saga cards, probably one of them will be quite valuable or will spike up in price. And then the other ones will realize, we will realize are completely useless. Set looks good. I mean, 
no gimmicks. I, I didn't like the whole, I know a lot of people like masterpieces and recently people have been buying out masterpieces. I didn't like that set. I thought it was way too gimmicky. Um, when I mean gimmicky, it just didn't, it didn't feel right to me. Like it didn't feel correct to me. It just felt like they, it wasn't like a extra. It should have been an extra. The masterpieces should have been a bonus rather than the majority of the value of the entire set. You look at Hour of Devastation, you look at Battle for Zendikar, what cards are over $10 in these sets? Like, um, Oh for the Gate Watch. Any of these sets, Amarket with the masterpieces, Kaladesh, like it goes on and on. There's very few cards outside of the masterpieces over $10. And even those are getting reprinted into Oblivion with Hazret and Chandra. I was really surprised when they hit Chandra because it's not like them to hit a Planeswalker. Hazret, yeah, I, I knew she would be hit eventually, but a Planeswalker, wow. And they, and they standard calendar deck. All right, next on, we got Lyra. We got Lyra's way overpriced. There's no reason this card should be $20. So if you look at it, Speculating on these cards really don't make any sense right now because even though they're good, it's the price point you buy in. That's the same in the box. Um, I'm going to address some things. If your local game store is competitive, buy from them. But if they're like leaps and bounds, but like if you can get a box for $80 online, which you can, and your local game store is charging $120, does it really make sense for you to pay $50? percent more to the local game store and the answer i in my opinion is no now if it was you know 90 online versus 100 in the store and you get a promo i think that's fine um i think anything above 100 anywhere is just not going it's not going to fly like you can buy these 90 dollars shipped to you all day long online and after if you wait a little bit you're going to get them a lot cheaper uh, and that's the that's the problem with the competition over a local game store. It's really hard for the, them to make money because I, it's just so, so competitive uh, in terms of online sales where you can buy from anywhere in the country or uh, even globally, right, if you don't live in the U.S. So my point is I like the set, but now it's definitely not the time to buy do not buy singles right now and do not buy boxes right now if you can wait. Now, if you're in, if you gain additional benefit from opening the packs or hanging out with friends and drafting it, yes, then you have additional benefit. But if you're just trying to get the most bang for your dollar, wait. Wait about two weeks. Uh, prices should drop drastically as product is uh, opened and supply is increased. And demand is decreased. Um, and then you should be able to, that would be, you would never want to, the old best time to speculate in cards is at rotation. Because even cards that you know are going to be playable, like Lily, like Snap, they go down during rotation too. With very few exceptions. Maybe the only card I remembered going up during rotation was the uh, fetch lands, and that was because modern was taking off at the time. So that's kind of a unique aspect. But even then, you had Misty and you had the Tarn at like ten to twelve dollars before Star City Games bought them all out. I remember Era Mesa was five to seven dollars, and that was a really good buy. So yeah, I, I like the set. I don't want to take anything away from the set, but you should be aware of so it's kind of like a mobile game. I play lots of mobile games. Maybe someday I'll show you my account and how much money I've spent. You can always wait for a better deal. So if you're gonna buy the same card and the only difference is you have to be patient a little bit, but you can get a 50% discount on the card that you want. Being patient and learning that is going to pay huge dividends in the future of this. If you continue the game, the longer you continue playing the game, the more you're gonna realize that yes, a savings later down the road are, is gonna be quite valuable when you compare it to, need, I need this today, I need this today. That's what everyone sells you on is hype. But as soon as hype di dies down, 
then there will be very good deals. And that's how you can continue playing this game at a very high efficient level and kind of uh, more or less optimize the game. If you're one of the people who buy stuff as soon as it comes out, you are going to be slaughtered on in terms of value in singles and boxes. It doesn't matter which one. It's both are going to get a lot cheaper after release. So my opinion is you should wait. And if you like a card, pre-ordering is the hardest. That's why no one at MT Finance does it. No one really picks one card and says, this is a card. Most people just say, oh, goes down, goes down price. And then when the review is like, done then you learn that oh hey these cards did go down in price like that was easy right no it's not the game is not picking what cards go down in price from this video the game is picking the one or two cards that go up in price that's hard everything else is gonna plummet into oblivion anyway that's it bye guys